Have you ever asked yourself, what if I was born in a different place, surrounded by different people? Would I still think and behave in the same way? Or am I a result, a reflection of what's going on in my own surrounding? I have an interest in entrepreneurship. For the last 12 years, I've been working with entrepreneurs. But one great Tuesday morning at the office, I just had enough. I was so confused about what I was doing. I had no idea if what I was doing actually gave any results. I could hear myself repeat the same words as everyone around me had been saying to entrepreneurs since the day I started my job. Focus on your passion. Write the business plan. Understand your customer. At the time I was working to give young entrepreneurs the best possible support with the startups. I think it's an important job. Imagine if all potential entrepreneurs out there could get the best possible support. How much faster they could change and improve this world. Today too much entrepreneurial talent goes to waste and too many potential entrepreneurs end up working with something insignificant for someone else. At this confused stage, I guess a normal person would probably Google the topic or watch a few YouTube documentaries. But not this guy. So, I left my job, cancelled my apartment lease, I planned the crowdfunding campaign to go around the world and figure out the answer to one question. How can we stimulate entrepreneurship? It was time to launch the crowdfunding campaign. Three days to go, two days, one day, and the campaign was out there. The campaign received great media attention and the word spread fast. I waited a few days and thought, by now I have probably reached the funding goal. I checked my bank account. There were 3% of the total month. And I could see my own mother's name on the list of the contributors. I had already left my job, my apartment, and told everyone about the journey. So there were no turning back. So I went out to promote the campaign even harder. And step by step, I slowly started to get more and more funding. On the way to the airport, I checked my inbox one last time. And I could see I received the final funding. The plan was to visit leading business incubators spread over five continents in the countries Kenya, India, China, Brazil and the United States. The idea was to understand the methods they were using to stimulate entrepreneurship. After the second country, I had to discard my hypothesis that the success was in the methods they were using because the incubators were working in totally different ways. This got my head spinning. After visiting the other four places and spending a total of six months in leading business incubators, I was even more confused. No incubator was working with the same methods. And still, this is leading incubators in each country. So I went back to Sweden, started to analyze the data from all the interviews, and I could see a pattern emerging in an area that didn't have anything to do with the methods they were using. It was something no one had focused on before. The entrepreneurs expressed the value of a shift in context. From outside the incubator to inside the incubator. Outside the incubator, no one believed in what they were doing. They felt isolated. When I asked the entrepreneurs the question, what did your family and friends said when you told them that you were going to focus full time on your startup? The answer in all the countries were the same. You are crazy. 
And this was not because they thought the entrepreneur was stupid. It was because the family and friends cared for the entrepreneur and didn't want him or her to take the risk and fail. But inside the incubator, it was not a question about if the entrepreneur could do it. The question was how he or she was going to do it. Furthermore, there were people inside the incubator who had done the journey before and could challenge the entrepreneur to raise the bar even higher and could act as living proof that it was possible. This surrounding of attitudes and impressions we can call context. Your physical context is what's going on in your physical space, and your mental context is what's going on in your mind during the same time. Your physical context, mental context, all the time you're shifting between the two. Daydreaming, thinking thoughts, then you're in your head, but when the fire alarm goes off, you're back out here. Let's go into the largest forest on Earth. We find the tallest and strongest tree. We pick a seed from the tree and we plant it in the most hostile environment. It's a dark, shady, cold place without water, located next to an old nuclear plant. We leave the seed for a few years, and when we come back, we find that the seed had overcome the polluted surrounding and grown into a big, strong tree. This is the story we tell about the unbeatable entrepreneur who can conquer every obstacle. But the true story is that the seed from the tall and strong tree had no chance to grow or even survive in the hostile environment. When I realized that the context was key to the entrepreneur's success, I wanted to understand what kind of effect the context can have on a person. So let's do a thought experiment. Imagine that you have been thinking of a business idea for quite some time. It might be the next big thing, just what the market needs. You finally find the courage to share your idea and get started. No one around you have ever started a business before, or even brought an idea to life. As soon as anyone expresses a new way of doing things, people say, we already tried that, go back to work, or they just laugh at the idea. Imagine now what you would do in a situation like this. I guess a few of you would say, I will do it anyway. But I want to suggest that the power of context will make it very difficult for anyone to go on. So you drop the idea and focus on what is accepted in your surrounding. Now you have the same idea, but people around you have been starting lots of businesses. They're used to bring ideas to life and they are glad to support anyone who likes to try something new. Once again, you ask yourself, who can I trust and who will understand what I'm about to explain? Can you not just see, but feel the difference in how you would behave? And for the brave person who would go on with their idea in the most hostile surrounding, I want you to think of the chameleon. The chameleon is all the time shifting color to blend in with its environment. But do you think the chameleon have the power to choose to be any color they like? I mean, if we find a really stubborn chameleon, a rebellious chameleon, whose favorite color is pink, let's call him pink. When pink enters a green forest, can pink choose to be pink in a green environment? Maybe for a short while, if pink focuses and tries hard. But after a while, pink's pink color will turn into green. So if pink wants to be pink, he needs to go and hang out with the flamingos. It's the same with people. We don't shift color, but we change the way we dress to fit in. We change our haircuts, but foremost, we change our behavior. And if we try to be different than everyone around us, we will have a hard time because we need to spend a lot of energy just to maintain who we want to be. So instead of working against the power of context, how can we benefit from it? I have an idea I'd like to share with you. What if we choose a different context for ourselves that would benefit us more than the existing one? 
like moving to a new city, country, job or school, and let the new chosen context have its effect on you. Or what is even more interesting, what if we start to design our own context? By understanding what is going on in your context, you can start to exclude certain parts, like people, places, media, or other stimuli. And you can start to invite new parts in your context that will benefit your goals, ambition, and your life. Let me explain this deeper. By you can analyze the context by drawing a timeline where you map all out all the different things that is going on in your context during 24 hours. Who do you meet and spend time with? What are you watching on TV? What are you listening to? What are you reading? Who do you follow on social media? In which physical spaces do you spend your time? What is taking your mind, your thoughts during this time? By understanding what is going on in your context, you can start to exclude the parts that doesn't benefit their progress and invite new parts that will benefit the progress. By designing a new context for yourself, you can give yourself better conditions for succeeding with your endeavor. The context is everything around you. The context will shape who you are and what you become. The context is in your power to shape. You are your context. It's time to design your own context.